Intro. I. Introductory. N. Nice. T. Tolerable. R. Ramifications. O. Oh, I see. Uh oh. <laughs> this. What's the Smartless intro? Welcome to Smartless. Smart. Well, when when did you when did you start chasing acting? <laughs> Great question. Settle in. A couple of weeks so, ago, I think. Uh, no, I got a long I got a long answer. I'm going to give you the long. It's going to be long. Any it's kid actually, stuff? Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that an excuse me? Um, Any kid stuff? Uh, <laughs> I auditioned for a couple of things when I was like 16. I did a couple yeah. commercials. Okay. Was, right, listen, a tight answer would be great. Yeah, just a tight, tighter. We've got a so guest listen. to get to. Okay, yeah, sorry. My answer is You're sure. not the guest. Have you seen the show? Have you seen the show? I should I think be. it's on Netflix. It's like, it's the new version of, of, of how they made these movies. And they just did Aliens. They did like Home Alone. Oh, wow. They did all, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I think I've heard of this. But yeah. I, I don't have the time to watch stuff like this. You have a lot of dispend, uh, expendable time. <laughs> I, I really around. enjoy that because I'm, I'm a big fan of these movies. And they get the cast. They got Sigourney Weaver to chat. and It's wow. really cool about how they made those movies. You know, my feeling on that is there's a lot of behind the scenes and how they made it. it's all like how they made the sausage hey guess what just enjoy the sausage no i i enjoy how they make the <sighs> Boy, sausage if i had a dollar i know um <laughs> well uh listen without further ado uh -uh. let's do wait are we are we in we're rolling are we in store for one of jason's classic uh no, profiles it, no let's, it's oh, not, here we it's, go it's <laughs> you're at this in between it's, shows <laughs> it's not that great. It's not that great. Um, th because the other ones have been, right? Yeah. Um, I'm talking about my intro guest, not you. You're going to be incredible. I will give you a quick hint, though. Yeah. You know, talking about how you're not wearing a hat today, Sean. And yeah. I, I love seeing your head. I think you've got a great head. Don't say he wears a lot of hats. He does, and I wish <sighs> that he wouldn't. He's got a beautiful head on him. You'll see right now. Here we go. Okay, so today we have a fellow that has found himself intentionally or not as a health analyst and part-time fixer for all that ails us here in our beloved country. Oh, I love it. I love it already. Some may call him a savior. Others may say the opposite. But no matter which side you stand on national policies, you cannot deny that this guy puts the time in on saying what he believes and the consistency of acting on it, leaving no us way. all with a mountain of information no that we way. might not otherwise have the time to research or way. even initially be interested in knowing. So thank you right oh. up front, sir. He's a one-time Eagle Scout and has since gone on to win an Oscar, a Palme d'Or, and been named one of Time's 100 Most Influential and has now made it to Smartless. Congratulations. What? Mr. Michael, Michael Moore. Moore. I knew it was yeah. Michael Moore. Wow. <laughs> there he is. Michael wow. Moore. Look at that beautiful hair. You can have the hat there, I mean, Sean. come on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, he does have a hat on, yeah. You're wearing a warrior's hat, Michael? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, he loves him. Dream on green, Michigan, Michigan State. <laughs> uh-huh. You uh, followed yeah. him all the way there. Michael, I was just in Michigan uh, yesterday. Well, you were. Great story, Sean. Yeah, w thanks. <laughs> what, what were you doing there? A friend of mine lives in Lakeside, Michigan. Oh, Who was it? Uh, Jason, do you know which friend of uh, Sean lives in Lakeside? I was. Dimitri is her name. Raina. It's Raina. That's it. I knew I was close. Well, you know, this is... I, 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 you know, I'm a big fan of this uh, podcast and I listen to it. No. Yes. I never heard it. I, I'm your third Michigander. Uh, on Smartless as your guest, uh, yeah, oh. Jeff Daniels. Jeff Daniels, yeah, right. Uh, on, and Ken Burns from Ann Arbor. Um, oh, yeah. Wow, is that where he started? Yeah, yeah. Yes. No way. And, so, uh, so there's a, a Michigan thing going on here with uh, Smartless, it seems. Well, but, listen, uh, we're fond of Michigan. Um, I've got a long history with Michigan. I, I grew up yeah. in Ontario. I'm Michigan adjacent. I was going to say, said the Canadian, yes. Yeah, <laughs> I'm Michigan adjacent. You know, we used to go, We <laughs> the big the big foreign vacation for us was to go to a Leafs game, Maple Leafs game, oh, yeah. in, in, in the old garden Give uh, yeah. uh, there. And there was a oh, yeah. really cheap hotel right next to the old garden. And we'd all, like, we'd get a room, a whole bunch of guys, and we'd just plow in there for the for the night. And the watch. Carlton, was it the Carlton? The Carlton, hotel? that's right, because yeah. yeah. it's on Carlton Street. Yeah, it's on Carlton Street, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so so anyway, so so yes, and and my, so my grandfather was a Canadian, and it, during the Vietnam War, I was in high school, 
And, you know, myself and my buddies, you know, we were not going to go and, and kill Vietnamese. What did they ever do to us? And so that mm -hmm. was kind of our thinking. Mm -hmm. And so we, we did these dry runs because we thought, oh, we're going to get drafted. We're going to have to go to Vietnam. Okay, we're going to have to go to Canada. That's our, that's our plan. So we do these dry runs across the Blue Water Bridge between Port Huron, Michigan, and, and Sarnia, Ontario, just to see what kind of questions will the Canadians ask us if we decide to, <laughs> to, to flee uh, or, 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 you know, how... How, what's the Canadian strip search like? Which I just said, it's going to be cold, whatever it is. It's, it's they have permanently cold hands, and they're going to apologize the whole time that, they've, that they are doing right. what they do. But, so, anyway, so one time we had this idea, what if our escape is a boat, and we take a boat across the St. Clair River from Michigan over to Ontario? So one of our, one of the, our guys here had a boat. His dad had a boat. Loaded up the boat on the trailer, and we drove over... <laughs> To the, uh, to the river, and you can see Canada. It's just a quarter mile, half mile across yeah. the river. <laughs> and um, we go to get the boat off the trailer. There's no motor on the boat. The dude forgot to bring the motor. <laughs> <laughs> now what are we going to do? Uh -huh. I said, Man, what, what, is you, well, I see you've got oars in here. Uh, yeah, it's just a, just a grody fishing boat. Uh, let's, we'll paddle across it. We paddle <laughs> across to no Canada way. to see if the Canadians... Uh, would catch us, which of course we Looking knew. For a soft spot. We, yeah, well, all of Canada's a soft spot. The whole <laughs> <laughs> soft border. I'm just saying, yeah. you know. They, you know, you, they, you described Jason on this podcast a little bit. He always shows up with no motor, and we're constantly yes. paddling. Yes. It's just that is really not, let me tell you, a lot of oars. Jason, good. Jason Bateman. True. Let me just yeah. let me just say, Jason Bateman, mm. uh, and I, I think it was you, Jay, but maybe it was you, Will, but. Uh, somewhere around 2004, right after Bowling for Columbine and uh, uh, Fahrenheit 9-11, uh, I get a call from your producer asking me to be on Arrested Development. Oh, wow. Like, as a character, but as myself. Right. But, yeah. but they've written me into... Do you guys remember this? I feel like I remember this story. I feel like I remember Mitch, this. Yeah, Mitch Hurwitz. Mitch Hurwitz wanted you on. Was that who? Is that he, is he, he was? He's, he's the brain. He's the creator the brain of the show. Yeah, oh, the he's the guy. Yeah, yeah. 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 Why do guy. I think it's Jim Burroughs? Um, Jim Vallely was his lieutenant. But, oh, yeah. okay. So, anyways, so they asked me to come, and I, I, I couldn't do it because I love the show so much. It's so <laughs> smart, and I thought I'm just gonna, I'm gonna fail so bad. <laughs> so I said, I said, I just can't do it, and and, and uh, you know, and, and my agent there, uh, Ari, you know, Ari, yeah, yeah, and he's like, no, you got to do this. Yeah, and I said, no, it's the smartest show on TV. I know. And it's the smart. It's the smartest one with humans. You're so right. the Simpsons would be the uh -huh. the other one. <laughs> and um, and so I wish you'd done it. I, I didn't do it. And then, it. So what Mitch did? He hired an actor to play me. <laughs> right. And I remember so, this. Do you remember this now? I think and so. Like, yeah. <laughs> they, tried, they tried to find somebody that looked like me, but that's impossible. So, so it's and then I regretted it. I regretted it, and I thought, yeah, you're just you were just chicken shit about this. And you mm. should have done it. So when you guys came back, when it came back here yeah. in the mid uh, teens, Netflix, uh, Netflix, um, I I I wanted to call one of you and just say, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. Now. How about now? <laughs> I'll do it now. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know what? When we do it again, yeah. And you will. Here it comes. We're, we're making Spoiler. news right now, right? Spoiler <laughs> alert. We're going to do the movie. No. Do Is that true? No. Come on. Really? Hey, Michael, you, you mentioned, of course, one of the first times I ever became aware of you in 2004 was the amazing documentary, Bowling for Columbine. Mm -hmm. Isn't it amazing to think back on that now? And I'm sure you get asked this a lot. Bowling for Columbine. I, it was just uh, an amazing movie and enlightened us all to, you know, what happens when guns get in the wrong hands. Right. And here we are... I don't know. How, I can't do the math because I'm too stupid. All these years later, yeah, and now it's a daily occurrence that daily. there is a mass shooting. A daily right. occurrence, and we're just so numb to it. And they do, and they define mass shooting as four or more uh, people uh, killed. And uh, it should be more true. than one. The mass yeah. shooting should be more than one. Should be yeah. But you know, when Americans were like, it's like you know this Canadian football. You know, it's not, you have only three downs, we have four. Right. We have to have yeah. more than you. You have to have more. Six points, not one point. In, in, well, in that's the, a good, well, that's a good point. The rest no. of the world plays football. They get one point when they score a goal. We get six, just because right. we are America. Right. America's, what was it, like 90% or something is for some kind of gun control, and we still haven't accomplished 90 that. 90% is correct. What is the deal? I, I don't understand it. 
What is it going to take? Well, first of all, the NRA is not the force that they used to be. They are not the big, scary lobby that Democrats would never want to cross them. That's, those days are gone for them. And, and I think some of these shootings, like uh, in uh, Sandy Hook in, in Connecticut, mm. where uh, 20 first graders uh, <sighs> essentially had their heads blown off mm. or their faces blown off. Oh, and, God, um, it's, it's unbelievable. And, and, and there's so much about things like this. I mean, I, I have... I have um, I've actually thought for uh, some time, and I've actually filmed a little bit of an idea I have, where because I remember this from the Vietnam War, and again, thank you, Canada, because we watched the CBC in Detroit mm. in Flint, mm. and in the CBC, the Canadian Broadcasting, the nightly news, which was on, I think, like at nine o'clock at night, uh, prime time, mm. uh, told the truth about Vietnam, told mm. us Americans across mm-hmm. the river what was really going on mm-hmm. with this war, and. And I, you know, remember thinking and talking to my Canadian cousins, why don't you kill the same number of Canadians, each of you, that we do in the United States? Because you're no better than us. You've got the same 23 chromosomes in your cells that we do. You watch the same violent movies and violent TV shows. Mm -hmm. Everything, all the reasons they give for why we do it and the Canadians and others don't do it. And and, and I was going to, uh, I was actually going to make this point in the movie because I did go to Canada, and it's in, in Bowling for Columbine. We went to, um, uh, um, what's it called, Statistics Canada in mm-hmm. Ottawa, uh, uh, which for Americans, I have to say, that's the capital. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, it turns out, per capita, there are more guns in Canadian homes than in American homes because hunting is the number one sport in Canada, right. more so than mm-hmm. more so than hockey. So, so why don't the Canadians? They got all these guns. Why don't they? Why don't they shoot each other? Right. Well, well, you made a great point, which is which is one, one couple things. One thing is in the movie when you go to Canada and you go to people's houses and their doors aren't locked. Yeah, I remember that. I just go up to random doors and open them and walk at into night. people's houses at night and walk in <laughs> and people would go, "Oh, how's it going?" How are you doing? I know. Like, and you go, sorry, I, I just walked in like, no, that's okay. Come on in, eh? Are like, you hungry? Kidding. Yeah, what's yeah. going on, eh? We put that scene, shooting that scene off, we put that off for two years to so the very last thing to shoot just in case a Canadian would, because you can't do that in the United States. You just can't walk into somebody's house. Right, just in case they night. shoot you. Just in case they shoot me. At least we'd have most of the movie. Yeah, in, it was in the that camera. smart guy. It's good producing, by the yeah, way. Yeah, really good, good producing. Planning, just, I'm always thinking of the film first. Yeah. <laughs> but I want to say, so, so, so again, and I know as a Canadian, and I've talked to other Canadians about it, it's a great moment of pride when we watch that, that scene because it shows a lot. I, I think Canadians take a lot of pride in that notion that, like, yeah, we're not, our first instinct isn't to kill. And so it goes kind of back to... A couple of things. Sean, what you said, you know, you said that movie is great because it's about, you know, what happens when guns get in the wrong hands. I don't think that that's right. I think that it's a, and I love this country and I've lived in this country for many years now and I really love it. And there are a lot of great things about it, but it, it's about a shift in the culture. There needs to be a shift in the culture and the attitude and the approach and how we look at our fellow, uh, at our neighbors and look at them as all of us, we're only as strong as our weakest link. And that notion doesn't exist in this country. Like you said, there are more guns per capita. Why aren't there more deaths? Because it's not the, it's, it, there is a cultural difference. And I think that what needs to happen in the next generation, and hopefully it will, there needs to be a cultural shift. And it's not, and by the way, we're not a political show. You've listened to it. We don't talk in this way. We don't. Pr- it's not political. No, right. To say to to say that somebody has earned the right as a human being to be treated uh, with health care, they have access to health care. That's just fucking. But humanity. Will, Common Will or Michael or Jason, yeah. what do you think about this argument though that it's all based in, in mental health issues? That's the problem, not no. the guns. It, it can't statistically. It can't right. stack up that way. It doesn't. It, I mean, yes, we obviously we need mental health care in this country, and it needs to be free, uh, like it yeah, is in sure. most other advanced uh, countries mm-hmm. what you said will is correct there, we have to we have to change the cultural uh thing here it's not a political thing you're absolutely right we have to change i mean i i i started going hunting when i was 11 years old and at that time 11 and 12 year olds we just <laughs> we just go out to the woods the parents when you know we just take the guns and go shoot yeah. pheasants see you but, at dinner yeah <laughs> If we, yeah. if we make it. Right. But, of course, we were all as a Catholic neighborhood, so everybody had, like, 11 kids. So, right. you, you know, I think right. I, my feeling was that growing up, all these families with 11 kids, it's they're just playing the odds here. You know, one or two are going to get shot out in the woods. Uh, we right. play baseball out in the street, et cetera. So, but my point, my point is, is that the culture, 
I won the NRA Marksman Award when I was in Boy Scouts. Oh. And you joined right. the NRA to, to infiltrate it, right? And, yes. And, 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 th- and, I was uh, going to run against Charlton Heston. That was my thought. Yeah, so I'm a, li- I'm a lifetime awesome. member of the NRA I love that. until I was excommunicated. But, <laughs> but you know, there's, here's the, let me just tell you guys, uh, uh, Sean and, and, and Jason, about you know, where Will grew up. They, have, they, they, have, they keep making their gun laws stronger and stronger. It's really hard to get a handgun in Canada, right? Uh-huh. And in fact, they've, they've, sometime recently, they've added uh, a new piece of the law, which is if you want a handgun, you have to get your wife, uh, your girlfriend, your ex-wife, your ex-girlfriend, they have to sign a form wow. that says you are mentally okay and not a domestic abuser. So you need and, sponsors. Yes, but the, but yeah. the women decide if the men get the gun. That's awesome. And so I started thinking, what's that look like if you're in a in a you're in a living room in Sudbury, Ontario, <laughs> and and the guy wants to get a gun and he's got the government form and he's had to call together the wife, the ex-wife, the girlfriend, the ex-girlfriend, the mistress. <laughs> yeah. Any women in his life have to sign this. <laughs> and he's got really the funny. paper and he's like, okay, now listen, <laughs> I I can't get a gun. Unless all of you sign this, say I'm, it's it's okay for me to have a gun, and they're all like, <laughs> really "Fuck <funny>. you! <laughs> yeah, right. We're not right. signing this." Right. And he's like, he's like, he gets really mad, right? He's like, "I'm going to tell you something. If you don't sign this, I'm going to kill you." Yeah, right. As soon as I get a gun. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> yeah. And we will be right back. Hey, guess what, everybody? We are brought to you in part by Zip Recruiter 2022 is going to be a big year for a lot of businesses, but some industries are projected to grow even more this year, like pet services. Yeah, I'm not kidding. I think we all know someone who fostered or adopted a pet over the course of the pandemic. And all of those new pets mean we need more trainers, walkers, and feeding services to meet the demand. If you work for your own business in one of these growing industries or a wide range of other industries, you probably need to hire as soon as possible. There's only one place to go. It's ZipRecruiter. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash smartless. ZipRecruiter uses powerful technology to find and match the right candidates up with your job. Then it proactively presents these candidates to you. You can easily review these recommended candidates and invite your top choices to apply for your job, which encourages them to apply faster. No wonder ZipRecruiter is the number one rated hiring site in the U.S. based on G2 ratings. I don't know what that means, but it sounds very good. And now you can try ZipRecruiter for free at this exclusive web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash smartlist. If you weren't listening, I'm going to repeat it. Here it comes. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash, and I'm going to spell it now, S-M-A-R-T-L-E-S-S. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. This episode of Smartless is brought to you by the McDonald's Any Two Classics for $6 deal. I'm pretty sure the best thing about going out is the victory lap of hitting the closest McDonald's, am I right? It's like a warm bag of, you did it, you night outed. And it was probably incredible, or at least it is now, because now you're holding a quarter pounder with cheese. Have you ever noticed that every McDonald's fan has at least two favorites they toggle between? Like for me, it's McNuggets and the Big Mac. That's a true story, that is true. Those are the two things I always get. They're both my favorites. I love them each the most. I don't know. It's a weird McDonald's paradox. Anyway, it's always weird when the person you're eating with orders the exact same thing at McDonald's. Like, if I'm getting a filet of fish don't you get a filet of fish Diversify. Be creative. Go blaze your own trail. Okay, I don't have time for that. Throw some respect on your order. I really do get McDonald's uh, six-piece McNugget with the sweet and sour sauce and then the Big Mac no pickle extra ketchup. That's what I get every time. So stop by McDonald's today and enjoy any two classics like a Big Mac, Quarter Pounder, 10-piece McNuggets, or filet fish for just 6 bucks. Prices and participation may vary. Single item at regular price cannot be combined with any other offer. So, listener, we have this great sponsor. It's called Liquid IV, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. So... I like to try to fend off Father Time. I am newly 53. I got to redouble my efforts. So I'm just trying to stay, you know, keep the heart ticking well. So it's a lot of cardio. And then what happens with cardio? You sweat. When you sweat, you lose salt. When you lose salt, you need electrolytes. I know everyone's tired of hearing me talk about it. But one great way to get those electrolytes in 
is going with the Liquid IV. The new year is here, and there is no better way to kick off 2022 than by making sure you're feeling like your best self, exclamation point. One goal I have for myself this year is to up my hydration game, and I will be doing that with the help of my favorite hydration product, Liquid IV. One stick of Liquid IV in 16 ounces of water hydrates faster and more efficiently than water alone, gang. It contains five, not four, but five essential vitamins and three X, three times, sorry, the electrolytes of traditional sports drinks. Made with premium ingredients, Liquid IV has incredible hydration flavors like watermelon, lemon, lime, strawberry, pina colada, and more. Grab Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code SMARTLESS at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order when you use promo code SMARTLESS at liquidiv.com. Experience better hydration today, not tomorrow. Today at liquidiv.com, promo code SMARTLESS. And now back to the show. So, Michael, is the uh, I, I, w- I would imagine that um, most of the hunters, et cetera, are, are and in fact, the, the, the polls bear this out, that they're in favor of, uh, of, of basic sort of gun control, gun review, they are. Or whatever Absolutely. it's called. Yes. So uh, the— The majority of Republicans are in favor right. and the of thing some that of these stopping, gun control. And the thing that is stopping us from having just sort of these basic uh, sort of re- regulations over that, again, for lack of the, the appropriate yeah. term, is yeah. because of the— gun lobby. And my and my question to you is, is the reason the gun lobby is so strong, so big, so important, is it because the actual industry of gun making and gun selling is so lucrative that they want to protect their, like, is, is there really that much money made selling guns in this country? I, I, it's just, yes. I, I, I just, in fact, and sadly, just down the road from the Sandy Hook Elementary School yeah. is the national, is national headquarters of the Gun Manufacturers Association of America. Literally in the same yeah. town there in Connecticut, wow. and no, they they yes, of course it's about the money, but it's also something else that will sort of alluded to. We Americans, we are a frightened people, yeah. way too much of the time. We live with fear, um, and and our fears are manipulated. Especially we've we've seen it now, where and what Facebook race, tapped into, they're they're monetizing. Oh yeah, it. no, yeah. The, the, that those papers showed yeah. that yeah. they will make more money the more afraid. Yeah. People are, and that fear goes from everything from a teenager uh, feeling uh, that she's too fat to a, a teenage boy. I've got too many pimples to, mm-hmm. to whatever, and and people won't like me. And they start to you start living your life with this fear. And scary mm-hmm. movies make a lot of money too. I mean, you know, yes. not to trivialize it, but people, it, it is a very a big emotion in this country. But it's. And it would be much better, actually, if people just got those emotions dealt with cathartically right. by watching horror eating movies. Eating popcorn. Exactly. Right. And eating popcorn. Yeah. But un- unfortunately, I think that um, race has played a significant role in why um, a lot of people think they need a gun in the home. And mm-hmm. the worst thing you can have is a gun in the home because the statistics show uh, you have a much greater chance of someone in your home committing suicide with a gun yeah. uh, than, than any other way. All the other ways of trying to kill yourself, o- overdose... There's a, there's a great bit that um, Jim Jeffries is a stand-up comic and he's Australian yeah. and he does this bit. I'm not going to do it justice at all, but he was imitating an American because uh, <laughs> they have great gun control laws in Australia as yes. well. And he's like, when Americans buy guns and keep them in a safe in their home, mm-hmm. and he was imitating a guy breaking in and saying, just wait one second while I go grab my gun. <laughs> and he, it imitates yeah. doing the combination, two to the right, one to the left. <laughs> Hang on one sec, I'll be right there. And then... <laughs> Right, you know, right. It's, I don't understand it, um, Michael. Yeah, did you did you start all of this effort with with such an undying passion for um, giving a voice to the unheard or putting a spotlight on the unseen, um, or did that was that something that just developed because you started actually as a filmmaker and you discovered that the subjects you were making films about triggered all of this passion about like which was the chicken or the egg. Mm. If you put it that way, uh, the film would be first because I've always believed, even though I always cared about these things, and I I mean, I asked when I was 14, I asked my parents if I could leave home. Um, I was inspired by Cesar Chavez, uh, Mm -hmm. the Bergen brothers, these, you know, kind of liberal Catholics, and I wanted to go to the seminary uh, to be a Mm -hmm. priest. 
And I had to talk them into this. And if, if you tell a Catholic parent you have a calling, like somebody has spoken to you, they can't get in the way of that. So right. I got to leave home in ninth grade to go to a seminary and, um, and to study to be a priest. And I, I, because I cared about all these social issues. And, um, but they, they kicked me out after a year. And I, and I went down and I said to the top, the head priest, I said, why are you kicking me out? I've done, I've obeyed the rules. And, and he, and he, Father Dewicki was his name. He goes, because you asked too many questions. Wow. <laughs> and yeah. he said, we are an institution of answers, not questions. Mm. Uh -huh. And uh, by the way, I mean, that's like, it <laughs> sounds like anybody who's, who's worried about uh, holes being poked. Uh, right. in their story. Yeah. You know what yes. I mean? It's like... <laughs> it also sounds like he's a member of the Lollipop Guild. Oh, wow. But, but, so anyways, but I love the movies and I, I always, from a teenager on, as soon as I got a driver's license, I was driving to Ann Arbor in Detroit to see all the Kurosawa, Godard, uh, uh, Francois yeah. Truffaut, everything. I went to see everything. And, and in 1983, I drove down there and I saw a documentary, didn't know much about it. It was supposed to be about, you know, we, uh, atomic weapons or nuclear power. And the whole film was, maybe you've seen this film, it's called Atomic Cafe. It's all clips of all the scare stuff during the 50s, you know, and it was funny, but it was about the end of the world. Right. And I, and I thought, wow, you could make a documentary and be funny. Yeah. This is like, who's done this? And because I didn't like documentaries, but so I always went to a lot of movies and, and I always, and I, when I, if they let me talk to a film class now, I always say to them, in, um, you know, the number one rule of not Fight Club, but of of documentaries, is don't make a documentary. Right. Make a movie. Mm -hmm. Right. You know. Yeah. I hate this word documentarian. Uh, we don't call Scorsese a fictionitarian. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Kubrick's not a fictionitarian. We we all make movies, and you can make it with fiction, or you can make it with nonfiction, mm -hmm. or yeah. animation. And those and those filmmakers will usually be drawn to uh, existing scripts that uh, that 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 speak to something that they're previously passionate about, or they will develop something that they're previously passionate about. Do you find yourself um, uh, waiting until uh, a certain policy or subject or issue uh, finds its way to you, or are you constantly on the search for things that mm. might benefit from you putting your light on it? That's a great question, and and the way I deal with that is I, the next film, I ask myself the question, what am I afraid to make? Okay. Mm -hmm. What's the movie I, I should not make? I'm afraid to make it. It's just going to be more trouble. Sure. Um, and so... Is there, is there something you can tell us now that you're, that fits that description mm, that you're working on now? Well, if you promise not to tell anybody else. No, no, it's just us. <laughs> yeah, just, no, it's just us. Yeah. Right, just, just us. us right? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Okay. Just whisper. Um, uh, <laughs> I'm right here. Listen to me. I'm like I'm, I'm trying to stretch for time here because uh, my my I know my brain is saying don't do not tell these. Just give us a hint. Just give it. We can always cut it. We can always cut it. We can always cut it. We can cut it. We can always cut it. We can always call us later and say probably even cut it. Um, something about soccer, isn't it? Something about soccer or table tennis. Something about ping pong. It should be about soccer. I, have, I, I can make a really funny film about that. We don't want to put you on the spot. You think about it. You, you think yeah, about it. You, you come back thing. to us. Uh, Michael, okay. do you think it's finally time for an independent to win in 2024? I think it's best if actually both people, people who run either for as a Republican or a Democrat should be independent. That it doesn't work anymore. Like we've, we've got so many, we've got 330 million people. Two political parties cannot represent the broad spectrum it's of absurd. political thought for mm. 330 million. So we it's so yeah, I wish we had more of a parliamentary system where they could they could form the coalitions, yes. more people would be represented in Congress and people would vote. I think that 100 million that don't vote, they don't see themselves represented. Well, you know what you know what's amazing Michael is it, how many people how many times in the last year I've had to I I I'm also a, a proponent of that and I've had to explain to people how the parliamentary system works. First of all, it's shocking how many people in this country don't know how that works, and they don't even under, they don't even know the concept of it. And when they hear it, they go, "Well, that sounds pretty good." Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know how it works. I, well, it's it, we can talk about it. Yeah, we'll tell you, I mean, exactly. you look it up. I'll tell you yeah. tonight. I'm going to tell you tonight at dinner. <laughs> okay. But I love this idea, Michael. I love the way you say you approach it. Like you just want to. What am I afraid to make? 
that is such a powerful, like Sean, I know that you, like you think, what am I, I know Sean's afraid to make a left on the Larchmont from, right. from third. <laughs> right. So he well, always, he'll go around, he'll take a right, and yeah. then he goes a right four and a right, right and then he goes, yeah, yeah, right. before yeah. he goes, yeah. so he makes four yeah. right It's right a turns. metaphor of how I live my life. But it is, but it is a great way to, if all of us could kind of look at like, what is the thing that I'm afraid to do? Yeah. Right. What's the thing that makes me uncomfortable? Maybe part of the problem is we've all become too comfortable in this country. I say as I lean back in my office chair. Mm -hmm. uh, you know? Spider-Man office chair. It is a Spider-Man. It's my son's mm -hmm. gaming chair. Yeah. Well, I agree with that. And I think, too, that um, if we could learn to be just um, kinder to each other, especially yeah. the ones that we disagree with. 100%. Um, and I think that would be a much better thing. Why is it, Michael? Why, why do you think in this country there is this notion that people don't care? I, I don't know if I told this on the show before. I once said to my dad, how come you, years ago, um, he was a lawyer, and then he went into business with one of his clients, and et cetera, et cetera. And I said, why did you never mo move to the States? You could have made way more money. And he said, because I had an obligation to give back to the system that got me here. Wow. Well, that and is, he meant it. And he, and he, by the way, that's a, that is a Canadian cultural thinking. Point, yeah. Though. And he's not a, he's not a hero. I mean, he's my, I no. love him. He's my dad. He's right. a really good, decent and, 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 uh, just person. But he, that idea, when I heard that and I was like 18 when he said that and he meant it and it's, and that, why does that not exist here? Isn't there a fundamental difference in how the citizenry considers government and what its role could and should be for the citizens in Canada? It's much more of something to help you and your life in America. It's more of sort of, uh, I don't know. It's not, it's not that, or at least to one, to one side. Well, this is. country was born out of a revolution. So think about it that right. way. There was always a distrust, right. but, but and the Canadians didn't do it. They didn't, they didn't revolt revolt against the British. No, they of course not. They, they waited them out about another probably 70, 80 years after our revolution because the Canadians knew the British would just get cold and want to go home. And that's exactly <laughs> what happened. Well, By 1860, true. there was a thing called Canada. Uh, uh, it's but, true. I actually, my family lived in New Jersey back then and during the revolution went, went to Canada because they were loyalists uh, to the crown. But apart from the relationship to government, what is it about the American cultural, what is it about that mentality that, that holds this country back from that kind of notion of being in this together or thinking of, or being kinder? Why, why does, what is that lapse? Why does that exist? Do you know? I'm asking for real. Well, it's part of the, was it, part of the answers in the last bit, which is that we were founded in violence um, and, um, and you weren't. And the Canadians weren't, and so you you organized yourselves uh, differently, and and to, so to this day, when you have a plane load of refugees landing in Toronto, your prime minister is there to greet and shake the hand of every refugee coming from Syria or wherever. And um, I wish we were that. You know, my Canadian grandfather, who was the Republican leader in my town in the U.S. Um, I remember him, and he would say that I'm a conservative, but a conservative means that you should conserve your money. Don't spend money you don't have. You sh should conserve the earth that God gave us. Mm. That, 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 is a, that has to be that part of what conservative mm. means. Mm -hmm. and, and, con and, and, and we're going to sit at, at the table and have dinner together as a family. I mean, just those basic mm. conservative what he called conservative values. Mm -hmm. And who would disagree with what I just said, regardless whether you're a Republican or a Democrat or whatever? Yeah. If we could, if we could somehow, and again, I'm, it's sad because we are a nation that was born in genocide and built on the backs of slaves. Mm -hmm. And it's not that Canada is a perfect place and doesn't have their no. shameful history with uh, yep. Native people. Yep. But... But we somehow never wanted to really apologize or get over it or, or fix it in some way to where the bottom rung of the American ladder is still occupied by Native Americans and black Americans. And that hasn't changed. And until that changes, I, you know, all this thing about critical race theory they're talking about, it's like, I want, don't you want, we want our children, our grandchildren to be taught the truth mm -hmm. about how we were formed, how we've behaved, so that we don't behave that way anymore, so we can be better. You have to question people who don't want to have those conversations why they don't. Right. I, well, I think because, to be honest, a lot of people, a lot of white people are afraid that if we, if we give up too much 
to our history, our truth of our history, uh, we're going to have to give up some of what we have. And, and they know the demographics too. They know that white people will not be the majority race in the 2040s. That's just 20 years away. So they're scared. They're yeah. scared and they think, just like the, the white people in South Africa were afraid of, if we let Nelson Mandela out of prison and, and if, if black people in South Africa have rights and they can vote, it's going to be off with our heads. And that did not happen, did it? And it's never really happened because most people who are victims of any kind of this sort of thing, they don't want to respond that way. They actually want to create the world that they wish they could have lived in all these years. Yeah. We'll be right back. Thanks to Simply Safe for their support. If you've ever wanted to make your home feel safer, there's no better time than right now. Right now, our friends at Simply Safe are giving smartless listeners access to all their New Year's holiday deals, 20% off their award winning home security, and your first month is free when you sign up for the interactive monitoring service. I use Simply Safe to spy on my dog. Uh, it makes me feel more comfortable knowing he's safe. It makes me feel comfortable knowing he's not getting into trouble. And if he is, I know that I can just get home and, and figure it out because I have it all on tape. We love Simply Safe because it has everything you need to make your home safe. Indoor and outdoor cameras, comprehensive sensors, all monitored around the clock by trained professionals who send help the instant you need it. You can easily customize a system for your home online in minutes and even get free custom recommendations. Simply Safe was even named Best Home Security System of 2021 by U.S. News and World Report. There are no long-term contracts or commitments. It's a super easy way to start feeling a bit more peace of mind in the new year. Hurry, take 20% off your Simply Safe system and your first month is free when you sign up for the interactive monitoring service. Visit simplysafe.com slash smartless. Again, that's simplysafe.com slash smartless for 20% off your entire system. This episode is brought to you in part by Fundrise. Fundrise is not about funds rising out of the ocean like a beaming sun. It's more about a real estate investing platform. Complete with an app, a website, and all the bells and the whistles you'd expect from a tech company that makes investing in high-end real estate. Think apartment buildings, single-family rental houses, and industrial complexes. Incredibly easy. Fundrise is designed to help add stability and performance to your investment portfolio rather than forcing you to choose one or the other. In fact, it's how professional investors have been strengthening their portfolios for years. I know you've been wondering how. This is how they've been doing it. Just tell Fundrise your investing goals. This is it's so easy. You just tell me, say, hey, here's my investing rules. Now, whether that's extra income or long-term growth, Fundrise is going to put your money into the real estate deals that are right for you. Now you can live anywhere in America and own properties in Austin, Dallas, Orlando, or other hot, hot real estate markets. Join the over 170,000 investors using Fundrise to diversify their portfolios without compromise. You can start investing in less than five minutes and with as little as 10 bucks. Sounds simple? It is. Sign up for free today by going to Fundrise.com slash smartless. That's F-U-N-D-R-I-S-E dot com slash smartless. Bye, y'all. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. We talk about BetterHelp a lot on the show. I know you guys know that. And this month, we're discussing some of the stigmas around mental health. For example, some people think you should wait until things are unbearable to go to therapy, but that's that's not true. Therapy is a tool to utilize before things get worse, and it can help you avoid those lows. And we've been taught that mental health shouldn't be a part of normal life, but that's wrong too. We take care of our bodies with the gym, the doctor, and nutrition. We should be focusing on our minds just as much. I use therapy all the time. I use it as a tool to kind of unload anything that's on my mind, whatever to make me feel anxious or depressed or whatever. And it's a wonderful thing to kind of have a partner uh, in a therapist to just kind of let it all out. Uh, you need to do that. Otherwise, it stays inside and it's really, really unhealthy. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, 
phone and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. Smartless listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash smartless. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash smartless. And now, back to the show. Michael, would you say the glass half full version of uh, looking at, at our future, perhaps, immediate future, is that the fear that we've been talking about, which is uh, sort of prompting all of these bad behaviors, do you think the fear might dissipate once those folks start to feel the benefits of this administration slash policies, legislation, all that stuff, will the fear start to subside a bit and some of that love and kindness that you were talking about as, as, the, as, as the medicine will more freely flow from those people that perhaps that's the path towards a, a lack of uh, sort of maybe getting rid of this tribalism and, and, and all being comfortable enough to treat us as all one, as we're all in this together? I think that's already in the process of happening. I think well, that's nice. I was out there campaigning um, almost two years ago for Bernie on the mm -hmm. road with him. Um, um, been a friend of his for since well his first election in Vermont in 1990. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you how happy I am um, that Biden is president. Yeah, amen. It's, um, I have been stunned so many times, and there's not a lot of coverage of a lot of the little things he's done. Yep. Uh, in a, a month or two ago, he got rid of all student debt for any disabled American. Well, you're a professional messenger. Can you not help them with figuring out yeah, a I way know, to I get know, the word out that it's working? That there what are, he's I doing, know. like the accomplishments so far, are <sighs> insanely no. Good. But the pro but the problem is with somebody like Michael is he's spoken the truth so many times that what they've done is that they've muddied the waters enough so that when he does say, "Hey, look, they did they did, they eliminate debt for all disabled people," they go, "Oh, just another Michael Moore. He's looking to <laughs> cause trouble." And it's like, no, no, yes. no, no, no. He's right. Am I right about that? Only with 20% of the population. Right. The people right. that are on the far right, the people that d don't believe uh, the coronavirus uh, is real or the vaccine is, you know, I, I don't know if we can help that, that sure. far 20%. But but I I have a lot of success and I have, I have a lot of fans and people that go to my movies and read my books and uh, listen to my podcast. And Substack. Tell us about yeah, Substack. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. No, I, I have a Sunday letter that I, yeah. I send out for free to anybody who wants it. I, and, uh, um, and I talk about these things and I talk about them in a way where I think that uh, I, I, I'm not trying to poke people in the eye with it. I'm just trying to say, hey, if you have a disabled member in your family, aren't you happy that this president, a president that I didn't vote for in the primary... Aren't yeah. you happy that that individual in your family, their student debt has been has been retired? Isn't that a great thing? It's a little thing, but he's done so many of these little things that I am so... Now when you look at the polls, you see that's why there is not a single thing in his infrastructure, the human infrastructure bill, that the majority of Americans disagree with. It's, it's 60, 70, 80% in, in agreement. What, what did, Michael, how did they do, what, what was the great trick that they played? Sorry to belabor this, but where oh, they okay. took people, you know, people, let, let's say you go to Michigan, some person who lives in Michigan who works, uh, who's been a union member for a long time. It seems like a lot of these sort of working class people who, who, who have been part of unions, who have benefited from certain social benefits, have been radicalized by the right. There, that seems to be like a growing contingent of people who, who would benefit a lot from a lot of these things, like you're saying, like they might have a family member who would benefit from what Bi Biden is doing, or they benefit from all I'll these social... I'll tell you why. Because the Democrats have taken way too long to make these things happen, if they yeah. had if they had made more of it happen sooner, that we wouldn't probably even be in the situation. Mm -hmm. uh, they, you're right; they are horrible at their messaging, mm -hmm. and uh, I would volunteer the next two years of my life to help them with that if they wanted that help. But you know, I, I wish you I, would. I mean, I tried to you know a couple years ago, my last movie, I tried to convince Steve Bannon uh, to be in the movie because I wanted mm -hmm. him and I to have a, a sit down talk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and. Um, and he told me uh, uh, during this, I didn't, I didn't, he ended up not being in the film, but he said, you know, I was at your very first screening of your very first film in 1989, Roger and Me, 
in Telluride, Telluride Film Festival. Yeah. And I sat just down the row from Roger Ebert. And I could not believe this film. And I walked out on the street looking for a pay phone. There were no cell phones back then. I called, I called one of our, you know, right-wing operatives in D.C. saying, oh, my God, we, the revolution will not be led by us. I've just seen this film. And this guy that we've never heard of, uh, if, oh, my God. He's a problem. He, he's a problem because, because our people are going to listen to him because he's coming from where they're at. Yeah. And, and he said to me then, this is just two years ago, he said, and, and my greatest thank you to the Democrats is that for these past 30 years, they chose not to listen to you, the Democratic yeah. leadership, the people yeah. that run the party. Yeah. They've kept you as far away as they can because you are the real threat to them. Yeah. Not, to, not to us as much, but to them. Because, and yeah. I was like, well, I was just like listening to this and my head was just spinning. And I'm like, you know, and I know this already because you won't see me speaking at the Democratic convention. No. You, you won't. You and why won't is that? What, what, what was his point? Why are you a threat to the mainstream base of the Democratic Party? Is that what he's talking about? Yeah. Yes. What, 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 what would be a threat? Because you're seen, you're seen as the extreme left, right? In their eyes. Yes, but mm. there's no, now, not any longer, the majority right. of Americans believe women should be paid the same as men. Yeah. What I believed 30 or 40 years ago, the majority of Americans, I'm in the middle now, the right. majority of yeah. Americans, the majority of Americans believe the climate is real. Right. right. I don't have to convince people of these things anymore or, or that minimum wage should not be $7.25 right. an hour. The American public has come... To, to my, now we just need to get them to vote, right? Yes, that's my point. The 100 million, how do we get them to vote? Yeah. My proposal is to the Democrats, get ballot proposals on the ballot that will bring out people who otherwise wouldn't vote. There should be marijuana legalization yeah. on every ballot right. in, the, yeah. in, the, in, the, in the country. Mm -hmm. there, there should, in Michigan, uh, in the last election, we passed a ballot proposal making it a crime to gerrymander or to voter suppress. Oh, I thought you said crime to have seeds in your in your weed, because that would <laughs> be get them out. No seeds. That no stems. should be in there too. Because yeah. yeah, fuck that mm -hmm. stems and stuff. And you're like, dude, are you fucking? And now he's already left. Just sift you know? it out. Yeah. The, crime, the, the marijuana crime I'm mostly concerned about is that when I was a teenager, it smelled so sweet. Yeah. Mm. And now it smells like a skunk. Yeah. What the hell happened here? <laughs> I don't right. know. But right. but I'm just saying that if if we get ballot proposals that will bring people out. Yeah, uh, you know, that's smart. We don't have an equal rights amendment still in this country. If you had an equal rights amendment for your state on your state ballot saying women are to be treated equally, again, you're now appealing to the base of the Democratic Party. Women, young people, people of color. Who decides what's on the ballot? Would it be the governor of each state? No, no, you just go and get the signatures. Yeah, it, you get the different. Number, how, many, how many signatures? Depends on the state. Sometimes it's... it's, it's 50,000. Oh, really? Sometimes, but you could, yeah. yeah, if you if you said, hey, I have an idea for a thing, you could, yeah. you could write it up today and you could go yeah. out and if you get 250,000, whatever. That's how, how do you think they yeah. did the recall, they tried to do the recall in Gavin Newsom? It was all based exactly. on Exactly. So it doesn't matter what it is. If I want to no. make, if I want to make milk green from now Correct. on in California, Correct. if I get 100,000 yes. votes, it the can be the ballot. Here he goes yes. on the milk green. Okay. <laughs> Dude, we're not doing it. I just it. think it'd be so much better. But let me just say that I, I wanted to say this at the beginning. And um, the three of you, who um, I've only met you, Sean, I believe, before. Um, I, I, uh, Will was in a Flint, the only movie ever set in Flint, a uh, fiction film uh, called Semi Pro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And That's right. That's uh, right. the Flint Tropics are the basketball yeah. team in it. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, and then, the, and then my, my chickening out on being on Arrested Development. But I, I just want to say that. Um, the more of the three of you in this country, the better. Because we need, well, first of all, we all need a good laugh right now. We've gone, mm -hmm. we've gone, we're not out of the woods yet. Um, but your ability uh, to use satire and, and, to, and to, your comedy is so smart. Um, it's just, it's, I, uh, I can't get enough of it. And, um, you know, I hope someday we can work together in some way because it's uh, an honor to be, on this podcast, uh, well, you're uh, a nice love. fellow. Well, it's an honor sweet. for you to be on this show. Yeah, um, yeah thank it, you it really so is. much, uh, Michael. I, I, I honestly, I remember what Roger and me was 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 such a milestone uh, in filmmaking. It really was. I remember just being. I couldn't believe it when I saw it. Fahrenheit uh, uh, 
9-11, just incredible. I remember the night I watched I remember going for dinner afterwards mm -hmm. uh, with my ex and a good friend of ours and talking about it. We were so moved. Uh, bowling for Columbine, um, you know, all these things. I, you're, you're, look, man, you're, you're such a brave, brave soul. You really are. And, and I love the idea. And again, it goes with, I need to say it again. If you're listening to this podcast and you think that these are just a bunch of, you know, that we're being political, it's not political to talk about human rights. Mm -hmm. It's just not. Uh, and we're just talking about you, what I love is you come up, your approach of it is, Hey, call me, paint me with that whatever fucking brush you want to paint me with, but let's just get this shit done. Let's get it and, done. Come on, we're better than this. Yeah, we're better yeah. than this. Come on, everybody. Yeah. And I and I and I I would just like to say thank you for basically saving a lot of us a lot of work. Whether you agree with you or not agree with you, um, you are providing, as I said in the intro, all of us with a lot of information mm -hmm. that we wouldn't otherwise either have the time to research ourselves or be interested in even knowing before we hear it, but you are presenting it to us in, in an incredibly well done way, whether even, even when you're on talk shows on news shows, I mean, I just, I love listening to you talk. So please, please keep it going, keep it coming and know that it is fully appreciated yes. as well as entertaining. So ditto here for everything thank you. Jason just said. It's just uh thank you for everything you've done. Thank you. And keep um, keep please don't stop doing it. Yeah. I, I I will not stop and and you don't stop either. Know know the importance of humor yeah. uh in our time. Will uh it's Will it's, <laughs> sorry. It's critical. Yep. And um, we tell them. We try to tell them every time. Uh, listen, anybody, anybody that's been in the, it was in the Lego Movie, uh, yeah. one of the one of the great. No, seriously, one of the great films of all time. Of one all of time. the most 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 um, pointed and and fulfilling uh, examination of us as a society in the Lego Movie. I'm serious. Yeah. You guys know I'm telling that. Let's you know. Yeah. Get, I agree. Give it a, I, I agree. Those guys, guys are so, sneaky smart. Yeah, no, no. Michael, Michael, <laughs> you know, and 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 These you know, I, I don't need to go through the whole damn list, but you know, Ozark, enough said. Uh, I mean, just well, it's just don't not, even put it on the list. Don't even put it on. If you don't no, want to go through the list, no, you have to. If you don't want to go through the list, just to yeah. leave it off the list. And you, and you know, we the public don't want you to stop doing any of this. We want you to do this work, even long after you've like I've done this for five years. I'm I'm mm -hmm. out. But um, but the importance of this. And of people being able to have that laugh and to have that, I think, you know, if, you, if anybody, if you haven't seen the film Sullivan's Travels from the 30s, early 40s, about uh, a, a, a Hollywood director wanted to make the socially conscious film and get people to think about things. And at the end of the film, he learns the best thing I can do is just to make a great movie and give people a chance to laugh. They've worked hard all week. Mm -hmm. Life is life is one curveball after another being thrown at our heads. If what you give are, people are two solid hours of a great movie, and and one that where they can laugh, yeah. and one that treats them as if they're smart, not right. stupid. Yeah. That's what yeah. all of you all of you do. That I remember my parents in their eighties were like Seinfeld was their favorite show, yeah. and I'm like, do you guys get any of this Upper West Side humor? And no, we just think it's funny. <laughs> And yeah. I thought, wow, that was the genius of Seinfeld, that he could take a cultural thing, living on the Upper West Side, and, and people in Flint, Michigan loved it. And, and that's the key. It's what I, again, to the people who want to make a documentary, make a movie, not a documentary. Mm -hmm. Make something that people are going to be just, it's going to move them. They're going to have a great laugh. Uh, they're going to learn something. They're going to get angry. Whatever it is, uh, don't go for the mediocre there's a great mm -hmm. Kurt Vonnegut line uh, in his only play that he wrote, Happy Birthday, Wanda June. And he says, uh, one of the characters says, you know, in America, they love the mediocre. And boy, I just hated hearing that at the time. <laughs> That's and why we're here. I, I thought, yeah. yes. And, and so we, we, all of us, must not do mediocre work. And we must give people a, a chance uh, while they're coming up out of their seats, feeling like, uh, yes, yes. Dude, I, Michael, that that is so inspiring. I, I, it's almost like I want to like Jason. Can you make a pledge today that you won't make any more mediocre work? Yeah. Can, can, do you think you can actually That's make that fair. pledge today? Yeah. No, we I'm just asking sign. him. No, we should have a petition. We should just have something to I'm sign. I'm dancing as fast as I, I can. <laughs> when I open, when I open my you movie won't theater, even, you won't I, 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 I restored an old movie theater in, where I live in Northern Michigan, and uh, and one of the first movies we played was Juno. 
That, oh, again, really? is an example <laughs> of a genius film, and your mm-hmm. role in that um, was beautiful. Yeah. It was great. And, He's and, a lonely and, guy, yeah. It was great. No. <laughs> he was, you were, you were fantastic. He were great. I forgot about that. You were great. I, know, I never forget He's about always that, great. Yeah. These guys... My, you're, I'm lucky to and, be with these And guys. the heart that he had with this teenager who was pregnant mm-hmm. and, and trying to be a good adult mm-hmm. uh, f- uh, for her was, it was very moving, but of course, the, but the film is also funny and genius and, and everything else. I'm just, this is the first thing that popped in my head though, but Jason, your long list of this is, is much appreciated by those of us who do need that respite. Uh, that that that. Well, chance. you're describing beautifully the stuff that you do, making the making the medicine go down uh, easy by creating some real legitimate entertainment around some education. So please, please keep that going. And 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 your stuff is funny as hell as well. I mean, no kidding. You know, getting the audience always. to a happy place is always, always the greatest first step towards change. So I think what what you're saying there about you know channeling the comedy and. Uh, you know, Adam McKay's doing a great job with that too, with Absolutely. all the stuff that he's making. Yeah. And so, yeah. uh, it, it, thank you. Note, note taken, and and right back at you. And, and <laughs> so please, jarringly please funny. How like yeah. Roger and me were so jarringly funny at the time. Not know, I didn't know anything about you before Roger and me. It was yeah. it was so jarringly funny and. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Well, thank you're you great. for that. Thank you, man. Thanks, Michael. Thanks for thanks for hanging out with us on a Saturday. Yeah, buddy. we appreciate uh, it. Yeah, uh, it's it's been, it's been great and an honor, and uh, and uh, we all have a lot a lot to do. And for the people listening to this, do not give up. That's no, exactly not. what they want we're you to do. We're on the upswing. Do, do not give up. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we're, uh, however, we're all... unless you think there's no way it's going to happen, then you do give up. <laughs> I just want to. I want to give them the out. I then start. Give them the you out. basically get your boat in the river up there and start. That's moving what I was going to say. If you actually Canada. believe that there's no way it's going to get better, get in that boat and go to Canada. Yeah. 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 <laughs> With no engine. Thank you, Michael. Very, Thank very, you, Michael. very much. More. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much. Be well. Bye, pal. You Thanks, too, pal. See you later. That man, I, uh, I. That was super, super exciting to see his face pop up there. Yeah, it was. He's a great filmmaker and a great voice, and I do love again. I love what a voice he is to try to be a voice of reason in the way that he tries to break st- issues down mm-hmm. that are complicated, that are yeah. hot button issues. Yeah. Gun control, for whatever reason, is a hot button issue. By the way, it should be fairly cut and dry, and for whatever reason, it's like. Yeah, it's like it's like for me, I I consider it is, as issues for dummies. Well, just singular, not not even not even plural, just issue for dummy. Dummy. <laughs> Sorry. He's, he's he's presenting it. He's wrapping it in a, in a very relatable. Yes, um, I you love know, it. Surround. Yeah, he's he's just. Uh, he knows uh, what I, he's doing. But yeah. he's, but the rap has a sexy indifference too. So it's like oh, a yeah, sexy like indifferent like rap. I'm, yeah. I'm like telling you stuff, but I'm not telling you stuff. Yeah, like it's kind of a coy. Yeah. It is. It is a nice. Again, whether you agree or not with with his stuff, uh, I think it's undeniable that what he's doing is somewhat philanthropic. Because I'm sure he's not. He's not getting. He's not getting super rich off of all this stuff. Um, but you know what's great about about that is he he doesn't pick a side, and we've used this before. But he doesn't pick a side. He's pretty much bipartisan. I'm bipartisan. What do you think? Here's what's astounding about your bike. We've <laughs> used bipartisan before, by the way. So just, I, that's uh, what uh, I said. Uh, I said we used it before. Pretty lame dismount. Pretty, pretty lame, lame dismount. dismount. Um, we'll make it up to you on the next podcast episode, listener. <laughs> oh, well, thank God you just saved it. You just saved it, you fucking dick. <sighs> Please stand by. Yeah, Rob with one. Please stand by. Please stand Mm, bye. Bye. bye smart Bless. smart Bless. smartless is 100% organic and artisanally handcrafted by Bennett Barbaco, Michael Grant Terry and Rob Armjarf smart Less. Our next episode will be out in a week wherever you listen to podcasts, or you can listen to it right now early on Amazon Music, or early and ad-free by subscribing to Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts or the Wondery app.